Welcome to video number seven. We're going to be working on the elevator assembly in this video and the next. It's quite a long process. So there in the beginning, you saw my wife Rachel and I doing a bunch of deburring of parts before I get started. And uh, now I'm just going through and taking all the sheet metal, cutting everything apart, uh, making any special parts, getting the majority of it uh, deburred and uh, ready to go for assembly. So up on the shelf, you'll actually see the horizontal stabilizer. That was done a couple weeks ago. My son had borrowed my GoPro to take on some cross-country flights he was doing while he's in uh, uh, flight school. He's uh, actually working on his instrument rating right now, moving towards his commercial rating. So I didn't film that. It was actually relatively simple, simple assembly. And uh, but uh, I tell you, so far the elevator has been my favorite. I guess it's just a little bit more complex. It's got some moving parts. It has some electrical. It's got the the linear actuator. Um, so it's kind of more in my wheelhouse. So here I've got uh, my pneumatic squeezer with the dimple die inserted. And I've got a clamp to the workbench, and I'm just using my knee to activate the trigger. So, of course, I've got the, uh, the little safety catch um, disabled where you have to move it forward and then to the side to activate it. So I do my best to whenever I have to change out the dimple dies or the squeezer heads to um, to disconnect the air hose. So hopefully you see me doing that every time. If not, uh, I was still trying to break the habit, so hopefully I've done that now. And again, on the spar and other pieces uh, where you've got a lot of dimpling to do, I like to clamp it to the bench and just get into a rhythm. You know, put the hole onto the die, squeeze it, move forward, easy breezy. So recently, I added a pneumatic foot pedal that I connect with another section of air hose to my pneumatic squeezer. I just activate my pneumatic squeezer with a small clamp so it's always on, and then just push the foot pedal down, and it activates the squeezer from the dimple die. It is absolutely fantastic. Here, I'm just uh, working on the elevator horns, getting those uh, match drilled, and ready to go. Yep, so there I'm uh, going to do some disassembly of the right elevator, get it ready to uh, do any deburring I have it done, scuff it down with a scotch brite pad, the whole thing, and go out and do the priming. My wife brought me another cup of espresso, which is always welcome, as well as a little conversation. She's been super supportive during this whole build. So here I'm uh, sawing apart the elevator push rod assembly. Uh, excuse me, the uh, trim tab on the elevator push rod assembly. And uh, this is actually my second one. The first time I did this, um, I used the riveter to make the shop heads on this little guy. So this material is a little bit more porous than, uh, than, than the stamped parts. And I obviously work hardened it when I was using the, uh, the rivet gun on it. I think I was using the, uh, I'm sure the, um, back rivet, um, rod, and uh, so it just uh, it didn't look as great as I wanted to, and it just seemed a little brittle for me. Uh, so what I did, I ordered a new one for Vans. It was it was like eight bucks, so not a huge deal. So you hear, see me here after I cut it apart, I had deburred it, cleaned it up real nice, and now I'm just uh, manually doing the countersinking. I've got my cage wired so it won't rotate on my drill press, going really slow with a I guess you know number forty. Um, fluted uh, countersink. 
I like the fluted countersinks with the hole versus the uh, the three kind of bladed ones. They just make such a nicer cut. So here I've got the uh, the trim tab scans for the elevator laid out, and I've got them marked up with painter's tape. And what I had done is gone in there and sanded them between the tape to scuff up and remove the uh, shiny surface. So that's when I take the uh, PVC foam ribs that I cut and I use the Pro Seal to attach. That's pretty much the only internal structure you have inside of the trim tab for the elevator. So here you see my wife and my son uh, giving me a nice uh, trim there. So I went ahead and shaved my head. It's uh, the middle of uh, COVID quarantine and I just really was tired of my hair being so thin on top and I just wanted to shave it for a long time. So finally convinced my wife, got her and my son involved and you know, you get people involved, they're more likely to help so or, or be happy with the results. And here it looks like I've already uh, uh, primed most of the pieces. I'm starting the assembly. So one piece um, on the, let's see, what was it called? So it's um, the very outboard edge where the counterbalance go on the on the two elevators. There's this large uh, C-shaped piece that wraps around. Uh, on the left side, it's like E913 is the part number. <clears throat> I had a hard time lining it up with the substructure. There was two holes that were punched that were just slightly out of alignment that caused me a lot of issues. So it frustrated me so much I had to actually put it aside for a week or so and come back to it. What I ended up doing, and that's kind of the part I'm assembly now after I fixed all the issues. I wound up uh, match drilling it to a number 30 size on those two holes that, that were previously number 30. When I match drilled it at a number 40, uh, one of the holes was slightly oblong and I was worried that it might um, cause a fatigue crack later on. So I went ahead and drilled it out to number 30. There was plenty of space around it to allow for, uh, you know, between the holes between the other rivets and the edges according to the builder's book. And uh, I just put two number 30 rivets in there and it worked fine. I feel very comfortable with it. And it's much better than having that oblong hole. Um, so here I attached the elevator um, assemblies. And now I'm doing the, uh, the elevator horn on the opposite, on the inside, internal side, inboard side. And I typically do all my match drilling um, before I prime. But here the powder coating on the elevator horn just was causing just a slight bit of binding. I couldn't get the rivet in. So I just did a slight little a match drill to get it all cleaned up. I got that all riveted together with the squeezer and I was happy to have that part done because those uh, elevator end assemblies really frustrated me. Well, at least the left one did because of that mismatch on the punching. So here, doing a little uh, mock-up work. And uh, my son came out to help out a little bit and just let him do a few things to double check, make sure I was in a correct alignment. And we were just talking while he was playing darts. He was just telling me about some of the recent flights he's had while doing his instrument rating. So I'm very proud of him for accomplishing that. And I'll just squeeze these few little parts together. I'll tell you if you or thinking about investing in a pneumatic squeezer. I know they're expensive, but they are amazing and they are very versatile.
So I'll start applying the, uh, I guess that's the left scan. It's got the cutout there for the elevator trim tab. Looks like I'm just getting the the uh, four forward part of the piano hinge in place. And I'll get that Clico down and probably rivet that here in a second. Yeah, so it's good to see that I disconnected the air hose before changing out the dies. It's always a good thing. Even if you have the safety engaged, it's still a still a good practice because that could really crush your finger. course once I get the rivets put in in a row that I'm going to be doing I just tape over them a couple reasons you know you could put all the rivets in at once and just go down the row riveting and they don't bounce out of course that's always very helpful plus it just makes the skin look better once you pull the tape off it doesn't mar the skin much now of course I will be painting this so you know there can be a few blemishes anything that can uh, be scotch brighted out right So I use the blue Sharpies and I mark everything with a circle and then hash marks. But then I put the initials either DND for do not dimple or DNR for do not rivet. And it just really helps me keep track of things. I know a lot of people will put tape over the holes that they don't want to interact with, but I find the blue Sharpies are more effective for me. Plus I use so much tape when I'm riveting. There's uh, no confusion. Yeah, get a little back riveting done there. That goes pretty quick. You can see where I primed the areas around where I had scuffed. So I painted, or excuse me, I taped and scuffed. Then I came back and taped over the scuffed areas to prime around because I broke through the all clad um, in rust inhibiting layer. So I didn't want to have any rust. So that's why you see a little dusting of the primer on there. Same process, just on the left elevator. Putting the uh, the support bracket, the reinforcement for the trim tab actuator. There's a few uh, nut plates to go around that. And uh, I was told one time to, whenever you use a nut plate, to run a screw through it just to make sure it's good. I did have one, I think it's nine nut plates that I put on that was actually bad. So when I went in to put the access cover on, it, um, it wouldn't allow the, uh, the, flush the flush head screw to go in and I attempted to clean up the threads and use a proper size tap on it, but it was just too too messed up. It just wasn't manufactured correctly. So I wound up having to drill that out completely with a, the next size tap. And unfortunately, I have the tap size at home here. And uh, I'll just have to find a flush mount stainless steel uh, flathead screw or flush mount screw that will fit in there. I've got it marked on my plans and I'll do that in the future. But at least I have most all but one to hold it in. So I told you that the elevator assembly so far was my uh, was my favorite. That is until it gets to uh, and which you'll see in the next video. Hopefully I'll put out next week. When it comes to the PVC foam ribs that have to be put in with uh, Pro Seal, 
that was interesting. It was my first time with ProSeal, but it turned out well, so you'll see that soon. Well, this about wraps it up. Thank you guys, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next video.